Hello friends, welcome to Spicy Cat Colors. My name is Kathy, and I am here today to show you, I noticed I did not say teach you because I am not a teacher, how I stickle. <laughs> now, kind of stickles 101, however you wanna call it. I know there are lots of other videos out on the fabulous creative section of YouTube talking about these products. And I thought I would do a little demo because I have some pages that need some serious stickling. So first I am going to go through the different products that I'm going to use and then some that are in the family because I will show you some examples where I use them. And I will show you how I store them. Then we're going to demo them and then I'll show you some examples. So if you're interested, let's dive in. So Stickles is basically a glitter glue. It is from Ranger and there are a wide, wide variety from other companies that do similar products. Some are comparable, some are not. It's all use what you find and um, test them out. That's the best thing I can say. I personally love this product line. So there are different types. This is, I'm going to show you pretty much the standard. Sorry, I have a new mount, so if you get a little bouncing, I apologize. But this is what I call just the base brand in Stickles, and they come in many colors, and they come in these little tubes, or bottles, with a nib that you squeeze them out. It is water-based. Sparkly glitter glue, you can use them on, I think, just about anything. I use them, these say, for paper crafting. I have used them on other um, decorations as well. Just know it needs to be able to dry. So this is your standard. It's a fine glitter with some color in a glue. <laughs> Another line they have is the Distress. This is the Tim Holtz. Distress Stickles, this is part of the whole line of Distress Inks, Distress Oxides. You will find that the colors coordinate with those inks. These have a little bit larger applicator dispenser, um, and it's going to ooze out because <laughs> I'm not prepared, because it is a thicker, chunkier glitter, and this will dye or dry matte. So it's more about adding texture than sparkle. Another version, which they still have. Now, I also need to say I don't know if all of these colors are still available. I have been collecting and using stickles for probably 10 years, so I may have things that have been discontinued. But they do have some, they're called the ice stickles, and these are very similar to this one, except the, if you can kind of see, the glitter is larger. So it's a larger glitter chunk, so you're getting some texture and your sparkle. Now I haven't seen a lot of these anymore, but I do have a couple in my collection, so I'm gonna show you. This is called the Glitz Stickles, and it has multicolored glitter in it. Kind of can pick that up. And what I'm going to use for, no, it's not the first time today, but the first time on a page, this is a newer, um, option in the Stickles line. This is their gels. It is a glitter gel, and this one is in Moon Dust. They have those in multiple colors. Now, those are what I will be talking about primarily, but because we're in the Ranger world and I store them in the same spot, I'm going to show you other products that you may be interested in from Ranger. They have a line called Liquid Pearls. This is the same type of applicator as the basic stickles. And this product, when you apply it, it will dry with a pearlescent shine. So they have a multitude of, multitude, multitude of colors of liquid pearls. Another product I really like, and I don't find this as often, it is called Enamel Accents. And I do have a blue and a white that I use a lot. This is what I would compare to, say, the glaze, um, like the Jelly Roll glaze, which comes in a pen form. This will dry glossy. It'll still look kind of wet. And I will use them a lot of times to dot. And it will also dry a little bit raised, so you'll have some texture. Speaking of glossy, one of the favorite things I use on my pages is glossy accents. 
this dries clear and it makes things look wet <laughs> is how I use it. It can also be used as a glue. It can be used stamping, scrapbooking, and it comes in this size and a larger size. And cousins to the glossy, we have crackle accents. And I will show you some examples at the end where I use these products. This is similar, except it dries cracked. So like on this picture, you can see how the face of the clock has cracks through it. That's what it does. So it's a glossy cracked finish. And the last product I have from the line is the sepia accents, which will dry um, gloss. So very similar. I compare it to the glossy accents, except it dries with a sepia tone. So if you are working on like heritage, vintage, and you want to do like a sepia colored accent, this is what you use. So those are the main products. And I am going to now show you how I store them. And then we will get into using them. This is the organizer I use to store my stickles and other similarly sized bottles. I'm not sure where you can find it anymore. I bought this quite a while ago. I'm not sure if scrapbookcorner.com still exists or not. You can check there, check Amazon. It is called Glitter Glue Organizer. And it comes with two little trays you can see in the picture that hold up to 48 bottles. I love these containers because they have the latches and a handle so it's easy to carry. And yeah, I customized mine because I have more than 48 bottles. And I went to the plumbing section and bought the little connectors for PVC pipe. I will insert some pictures showing you that. And then I glued those together so I could get all of them in here. Because this is so big, I'm also just showing you pictures of what it looks like as a whole, which is much easier um, for you to see than for me to move the camera around and bounce it. Other than the storage, this is a very important part of my storage system. Let me set this out of the way. This is my swatch chart, which I just printed out. I found them online. Google it. I have no idea where it is, if it still exists. Again, these are very old. And um, I found one for distressed stickles, distressed ink pads, regular stickles, and liquid pearls. So I printed them out. I took each of the bottles I have. This is an easy way for me to know which colors I have. And I can actually just take a picture of this so it's on my cell phone. So when I'm shopping, I can easily see which colors I need. And I can see what it's going to look like when it's dry. That's the reason I recommend the um, swatch charts because the colors may dry a little differently. Here's the liquid pearls I have. I've just added on some extras that I've picked up that didn't fit here anymore. The colors may be discontinued currently. I know the liquid pearls are still on the market as are the distressed stickles, but the colored names may have changed from what you're seeing here. So just be aware of that. And then this is the messiest one. This is the stickles. Um, I do have all of the stickles that they had this chart for, but then I have more. So obviously there have been more to be released. And here's probably a good example. So these are three pinks, but you can see they're very different pinks. And I also have little swatches. I matched Copic markers to what would be the closest to... Oh, it's just a thing when I colored with my Copics when I did a lot for my card making I would add stickles and it was easy to find what would match the colors and like your greens even your gold and your goldenrod are slightly different the most noticeable differences are the clear sets um, which again if these are still available or not but one when it dries has more of a bluish tone one is kind of holographic um, a little more blue, a little more pink, and then completely like frosted white. So if you have stickles and you have a swatch book for your markers, your paints, everything else, I strongly recommend doing a, a swatch chart for it. It is immensely useful to me. Okay, let's get ready to stickle. 
So I am going to work on a page here in Chibi Girls coloring book. This is from the Rise of May, I do believe. And here is my page. I have already colored it. So we are just going to do the embellishments. I do recommend if you use alcohol markers that you let your page completely dry before ever applying any accents, whether it's gel pen or anything else. So you will want, other than your stickles, which I have set over on the side here, you want a little scratch piece of paper and a paper towel. And the first thing I am going to work on is the little beehives up here. And I am going to use the Distress Stickles in Mustard Seed. So what I always recommend doing, you can just put your paper right here. Is this going to focus? Sorry about that. And I open it because sometimes if it's been closed for a while, it'll just start gushing out. So be prepared for that. And if it does, that's a good thing. So, I'm going to just start applying it to my little thing. And this is going way gushy. So we're kind of doing the flood method, which I was not going to do here. But because the stickles decided to completely <laughs> gush out, I'm rolling with it. And I am just, like, I had didn't have to squirt any out. It totally just gushed. And I just use the nozzle to spread it around. I will show you another option as well, but since this is a chunkier one, it won't make that big of a difference. Uh, keep in mind, you could use this over uncolored paper, but you will, it, when it dries, you will have some of the paper still shining, coming through. So that's why I like to color and then apply my stickles. So what I intended on the first one to do was kind of just squirt and swoop. That's my technical term. Just kind of showing you the two different ways. And this is a way that I call like adding dimension. But it'll add some interest to my little hives, but it's not going to be glittery and sparkly with the distressed. So, and stickles have a fairly quick drying time, but just know you need to still be careful because if you're working, work on your page in a logical manner or you're going to stick your hand in it. I do that all the time. So there, do you see how that works? I'm going to just leave my two different hives It'll look different on the page, but I'll know it was my stickle example. And then I take and I just use the paper towel and wipe off that tip and seal it up right away. So we're done with that one. Now I am going to keep working down and I'm going to put some stickles to color with. So here you're going to see the difference where I did not color this. And I'm going to use the Glitz Stickles in Sequin. And same thing, that one's gonna start gushing out. So since I want it in a line, I'm gonna just kinda let it squiggle out some over here. And then I'm going to just let it flow down and I'm painting or coloring, whatever you want to call it, down her antenna. And just use the tip to kind of move it around to fill in the space. Then move over to the other one. Careful, I'm not putting my hand in my beehive. And this is almost just what I would say, straight coloring. Same thing, wipe off the tip, seal it up. Okay, what else can we stickle on this lady? So I'm going to switch back and forth a little bit. Here I'm going to use some liquid pearls on the centers of the flowers. I will frequently use stickles for this as well, but I'm not. This is where I'm going to do a test and this looks like it will be fine. So with this one, all I'm going to do is basically make a dot 
and lift straight up. You might get a little bit of a tail, but as that dries, it will settle down <laughs> and you'll just have a nice design element. Let's put those. Just going to do this left half of the page and then switch because I'm going to do some stickles in the flowers and her hair. So flowers, I call this shading. I don't know if that's actually what it is, but um, you can use your stickles to get a shading element. So I'm using the candy cane. Again, make sure it's not going to bloop on your scratch. And I kind of use, just like I would with markers, a bit of a flicking motion. So similar to what I did on the um, beehive, I do a little swap and then I just kind of spread it out. So like it's being shaded. You might see darker coming from the center of the flower. That makes sense here. So I'm gonna do one swipe and then just use the nozzle and spread it out. Now this is going to dry and not have a super thick, I mean opaque, you're gonna definitely see through, but it will give you that shading type texture as if I'd gone in with a darker marker and colored out some lines. And here's an example where I just stuck my hand in this pearl. <laughs> I went too far, but okay, let's finish out these flowers on the left side of the page. And again, just kind of squiggle. There's not a precise method, at least not that I know of. And um, just add a little bit wherever you want to. A lot of times in coloring books, there'll be these lines that kind of allude to the fact of the shading. So that's more or less what I'm going over. And I'm going to put that one away. Let's do pretty much the same thing in her hair. Uh, I am going to use Glam Pink Stickles. Obviously, this is just your normal stickles. Same thing, open it over your scrap piece of paper. Give a little squeeze so you don't get rid of any air bubbles or see if like this one is not working. And I can see there is a little bit of dried glitter in the tip. So I didn't show this earlier in my swatch. I have actually just some stick pins stuck through the paper and I will just use that to unclog the tip. Let's set the pin aside and let's try it again. And now it works. So let's see. I'm going to just kind of do some random, probably along the lines that are drawn there. I'm not going to glitterify all of her hair. Almost, oops, if you notice that was an air bubble splooch. Sometimes you can tap it down a little bit if you need to get it to move down. And if you catch it in time, and don't stick your finger where it doesn't go, like I went onto her face, I just use my finger and kind of push it in. But if she had a little sparkle pink on her face, life would be fine. So you can go pretty quick. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. And I wouldn't probably normally do so many different types of stickles or accents on a page. But for the demonstration purposes, we are having lots of stickle fun. Yeah, I'm not that big of a planner in general when I'm doing my pages. I kind of just free it, free will, wherever this wants to go, and in the end, I'm still happy with my page. So I think I'm good with all of the pinks on her hair. I am going to do some, 
Now this is what I actually meant as the flooding kind of technique or painting. I'm going to show you a tool. If you don't like to, you can just do your finger as well. But if you don't like to get your fingers dirty, I just picked these up. They, I got them on Amazon. It was inexpensive. This is what they were called. They have different tip shapes and I use these in multiple things for my crafting. But I have this one pulled out. So it's a rubber tip. You can use a paintbrush. What I like about these is you don't lose product inside the paint bristles, which can then dry up unless you, if you, unless you wash it right away. And these are super easy to clean up. So I'm going to do her wings in the crystal stickles. So first step, take off the lid once again, open, do your squirt to make sure you're good. And I'm going to just kind of squiggle some of the product on. And then I'm going to take my tool and spread it out. So this is one way to do it. So I'm spreading it in the whole wing. You can kind of dab it around, get the, it's got the nice points. It will, I mean, you have to be careful if you're spreading it, it's gonna pick it up and it like almost disappear onto your little tool here. But if you just keep kind of patting it down, it will get all up in her wing there. Can you see that? So this is one option. And I think I need a little bit more. So we'll dabble do ya. Anyone, anyone else's grandpa, real cream, little dabble do ya, know what I'm talking about? My friend is across from me and she thinks I'm insane. But, so that's one thing to do and this is a nice, easy, clean way. But I'm a bit messy, so I typically, this is what I will do. I will squirt some down and just use my finger to spread it. Now the tricky part is in these small little places it's difficult to do with your finger but you get the idea and we'll do this wing as well just squirt some product on it i just find your <laughs> fingers are the tools god gave you so i'm just gonna use it and then i will wash my hand and you don't have to have everything you know, this are little fairy wings, so I'm sure, depending how the light is shining. And same thing, just kind of push off where I got on her dress. But there, I'm done with the icicles. And where are we at? Oh, the other product I wanted to use on this page is enamel accents. We're just going to use the black enamel accents and I'm going to use it on her dress. So to me, I envision this is her belt and I would like it to be shiny like a, I don't know, it's not patent, <laughs> it's not patent leather, but we're just going to say it's a plastic belt. <laughs> so with all the products, squirt it off to the side and let us, I'm just going to flood again this whole belt. And basically, if I'm doing a larger area, I will do the outline and then kind of just fill it in. And I'm also going to do this. You want to kind of with this to make sure you don't have any huge gaps. It'll kind of level itself out, but you don't want any, you want to have enough product. And I'm also going to do her shoes. She can have shiny little shoes. And wipe off the tip. And I'm going to finish my flowers now. So I can put the page aside. So I'm going to fix the one I stuck my hand in. And do the rest of the flower middles, little accents. 
And here I'd actually colored over that whole center flower, but you don't see that now. And lastly, we'll do a little bit more candy cane shading on these larger flowers. The flick and spread. Should like make a little glossary to go with my little how I stickle. I'm curious if other people do these <laughs> techniques or methods if you use, um, what words you use? Do we have technical terms? I don't know. Just add a little bit extra because you can't have too much glitter. I don't think. And there, that's about as much as any one page can handle. <laughs> so, there's my girl with all of her different, we use the Distress, the sequins, the standard enamel and pearl accents. So, I'm gonna set her aside to dry. You wanna very make sure you have a place where your page will be safe and can dry because it will take a while. I keep a blotter page behind. I've never had an issue, but depending on the quality of the paper, this is water-based, so it's gonna kind of soak through, and I don't want it to stick to the um, page behind or anything like that. I'm trying to think if there was, oh, another, I found another spot we could add more stickles. Let's do this. So on the cloud, I don't know if I, this is kind of like my outline method, if I can, I don't know if I mentioned that one. So here I'm gonna still just use the crystal and I'm going to outline. A lot of times when I do clouds, I'll use like my white gel pen to outline it. But this is just going to give it, you know, we're in fairyland. So to me, that means you can have lots of sparkle and glitter. So I'm just gonna use that. It kind of um, tones down that black edge from the illustration and we'll have sparkly clouds. Could also use the white enamel accents if you really wanted to like white it out. This is pretty easy just like um, to control your application in these the bottles. I think they work really well. So there. Now I have all the stickles she needs. And there's another technique I'm going to show you, but I need to switch books, so hold on. Okay, this I'm going to do a different technique. I am going to go in and probably add some stickles to other areas using the same technique I already talked about, where I would just do like some, I might do some in her hair, just little bits of lines, outline method. Here I already, had used glitter around the balloons, and I used glitter pens in her tiara. So I'm kind of adding in another element of glitter in a different way, same with her necklace I already did. But what we are going to do now, and hopefully it works, uh, I forgot to show you, this is the quinceanera page from, whoa, totally hit you there, sorry. The Hannah Lynn Whimsy Girls Celebrate the Holidays and Festive Occasions. So I am going to use a stencil and the glitter, the gel stickles. And then I have a little just palette thing that I actually got a three pack from Dollar Tree. So let's get situated. Okay, let's hope this works. So on my girl's dress, you can see what appears to be, I'm sure, sequins. There are a bunch of different ways to color sequins just using gel pens, markers, stickles, I'm sure. I'm gonna try a new to me way. So I have the glitter gel in Moon Dust. If you haven't seen this product, you open it up and you can see I'm not sure if it's actually the same as what's in the tubes. It seems a little bit thicker than what um, I squirt out of the nozzles. <laughs> but this is how I'm going to use this. I've used this on cards before. This is the first time I'm going to use it on 
a page. So I found this stencil with all these stars and I'm going to apply, I'm gonna try and just fit it on here. Now, granted, I could probably glue this down because I'm gonna just try and be careful to not go beyond. I only wanna get on her dress. So, I'm gonna take a little bit. You don't need a lot of this if you're using a stencil. So I have some on my palette knife and I am just spreading it across. And I'm being very careful to not put it on her arm, the skin, and just kind of scrape it. And you gotta push down a little bit so it gets into the stencil and then kind of scrape up that extra. Don't don't waste your product. Take your and scrape it off and then just take and wipe that against put the excess back in the pot. So now I think I've got all the spots on there and I'm going to lift my stencil and let's see if I did it. Does it even show, my dear friends, on? Can you see it? I don't know if you can tell so much that it's stars as it just added sparkle. So I'm not going to go through, there's a little spooch where I got over the line. I'm not going to like go and add to each of these individual pieces of sequin. I'm just kind of giving this illusion of extra sparkle. So I'm going to wipe this off, wipe my stencil off, and do some more. I was trying to find a stencil that had like small circles and the ones I had had way too much, um, the circles were too big so it didn't look right to me for what I was working on. So I'm gonna now do this little section. Well, try to. And I may have to do this in like stop in chunks and just show you at the end, just so I can let it dry. So again, and you could use, if you don't have one of these little palette knives, um, take that lovely um, wine club card that's in every mailbox, I swear, or a uh, expired credit card, anything like that. Those are perfect size or gift card. After you've used the gift card, keep it. It works great to um, do this little, you know, you just want something hard that you can easily kind of swipe across. So let's lift this one up and voila. Oh my gosh, I wasn't even framed there. I'm so sorry. Did anybody even see that? This is, you know, people that don't do YouTube videos, this is why it's very difficult. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, okay, let's go down to her skirt and see. We can get a bunch, a big section. Okay, here we go. I made sure we're in frame. Okay, so again, just take a little bit, swipe it across. The area you want obviously if you're doing a section where you're not trying to avoid parts of the picture or if I was a real professional I would use a masking project or product or even like washi tape to cover up the section I don't want stickled in but seasoned friends you all know I'm not a professional and if you're new, you're probably wondering, why is this lady thinking she can show us anything? Again, I am not teaching you. I am just showing you different ways that I use stickles in my coloring books. So, got it all scraped off and lifted up. And there. Now I think you can see it. So once this is all done, which I'm not going to do the whole thing with you on camera, but I'm going to finish her dress and add in some more stickles 
to her hair, I think. Zoom out a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna finish in the dress with these stars and the glitter gel. And then I will add some other little accents. And you could actually just use this same gel and like I could use my palette knife and make swipes. Let's just try it. Cause I was just gonna use the bottled stickles for that to kind of swipe on her dress. But let's just do a little bit with the palette knife. It doesn't, again, I just, I'm not too worried. Now it kind of, I'm actually gonna do quite a bit cause it reminds me of, like I would envision this dress would kind of have that sparkly um, tool over the top. So let's just kind of flood this whole section in a different way. We're just going to spread it on, which is another way. So I would use this. There's like a nebula and uh, another like cosmic one of the gels that have like star sequins in that I've seen people use on skies. And this is probably the method I would use to apply that. Again, fingers work fine too. The thing with these pots, I personally don't like sticking my finger into it. Even though if I like washed my hands, um, I just, it would be concerned about contaminating it. These are water-based and who knows what little microbes are anywhere. But I personally don't wanna stick my finger in since I want this to last a long time. But again, that's just, a me thing. So I think this kind of gives you an example of how that looks now. Does it look like she's just got, you know, netting? So let me finish this off camera and then I'm going to show you some other examples that are already dried and you can see how I've done this. Okay, now I'm going to show you some examples of ones I've done. I was just going to show you because I did just finish this off camera. I finished doing the stars on the bodice of her dress. I did a full layer on her skirt. And then I added, did that star stencil on the balloons. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm still going to do a few other things. So you'll have to look at my August finished pages to see that. But let me show you a few ways. I have also used stickles. So this is 50 Vacation Miniatures, and I did, this page I actually don't have any stickles, but this is where I use that glossy accents a lot on eyeballs. So there. Now, prepare yourself. I think I did every line with stickles on this page. So let's see if we can get it. Sorry, move the camera up a little bit or not. It might not work. Sorry, or I could just zoom it out. That might be the smartest thing. There we go. So these butterflies are stickled and liquid pearled everywhere. So I just did the outline method on both of their wings in coordinating to the marker color stickles. I used the black enamel accents for their antenna. I used pearl, liquid pearls, to outline their bodies and for their straws and on the pink lemonade. I do apologize if you hear a lawnmower, they're mowing the lawn right outside my window. And then this is where I wanted to show you how it will look if you use the stickles without coloring. So like over the bare part of the page, can you see right in here on the bow? I used, I think it was called cotton candy, and I had not colored it. So the white of the bow, the paper, is still coming through. So that's why you're not going to have a solid coverage when you use stickles. And then I also used it, I had colored the eyes then, both of these. I colored the blue and the brown, and then I put coordinated stickles over the top, which it makes it look pretty solid. So that is my example. And the other example is down here where I kind of did, it's hard to see because it's brown, but on the leaf I did my using stickles to shade, if that is showing up for you. So that's a super stickled page. You can also use your stickles 
It doesn't have to be like characters. I use them on mandal mandalas also. So this page, I use liquid pearls and stickles. So I use the stickles on the borders here and little dots, just the red and the yellow. And then these blue dots are all enamel accents. I zoom in you can really see and these do have a texture so you feel that bump and the same with the stickles it definitely has a texture so if you do use this on a page and then when you want to color the next page in front of it you're just gonna make sure you might want extra um, blotter sheets or something in there maybe like a cardboard thin cardboard just because when you're coloring the page in front of it, you could get that texture that would affect your coloring. So you don't, don't necessarily want that to happen. So I'm going to try and show you in Hannah Lynn, it seems in this book I have used a lot of the products that I showed you at the beginning. So first up, I just don't want to ruin my girl that's still drying. So on this page, I used the glossy accents, but here on the clock is where I used the Crackle. This product that I had shown you, Crackle accents, you can see on here how it, the clock face is um, broken, so to speak. So that's where I use that. Uh, I use stickles to make the fireworks here. Let's just kind of pop through. Also on the Super Bowl one here, I flooded the helmet. I did just some line highlights. And down here on my guacamole, I did the crackle again. So it's kind of, you're not gonna know where your lines are gonna be, obviously, but it's just another fun way to add texture and really easy, you just gotta let things dry. Um, could probably flip through every page. For sure, I use the glossy accents on the eyes. I don't think I have stickles on this one or this one. Here I used stickles kind of as the um, shading technique but I just used silver to kind of give that sparkle. Um, nothing on that one or that one. Here, again, stickled within an inch of her life. So I flooded and I used, I can't remember if it was the frosted or a distress. So let's zoom in, zoom in my friends. So here, it's not the sparkly. You can see it doesn't have sparkle glitter, but it just gave it texture. So I was kind of wanted it to be like a fur shrug. And then I did the outline stickles for her little gloves and in her hair. And then this is the what I wanted to show you here. I used the sepia accents on my chocolate bunny. So it's kind of hard to see because I had already colored it brown but I just did the edges and defined the face and then it dries not clear. It's got a brownish tinge to it. So it kind of works really nice. Here I do know the grass and the little ducky. I use the distress stickles as well as on the basket. So they have the texture of the glitter, but not any sparkle. And then Here's another one. I think we're just gonna jump ahead where I did kind of a, or almost, I used just my finger. <laughs> I didn't use the um, spread thing, but in her hair, I basically did a blotch and then I just kind of spread it around. So not every section of hair has stickles on it, but I definitely added a lot to it. 
So there you go, friends. That is my How I Stickle video. We'll look at my beautiful little quinceanera girl while she dries. I still need to add some more accents like I mentioned, but I hope this was helpful, useful. Uh, again, I am not an instructor by any means. I just wanted to show you how I use the products. I am sure there are a hundred other ways to use it as well. But this is the current way that I am using the stickles primarily and then some of the sister products from that Ranger line I exposed you to. And there you go. Let me know if you liked this, if you would like to see more of the How I videos. And I can certainly, timing is always tricky for me to film, but I'm certainly happy to do so if there are people that would like to see it. So thanks again for stopping by, my friends. Seasoned friends, you mean the world to me. You definitely add the glitz and sparkle. And new friends, thank you. Thank you very much for stopping by. If you were just looking at this for a how-to type of video, I'm glad you stopped. Please consider subscribing. I am a lot, just so you know, but I'm kind of fun, I think. So <laughs> we shall see you all again soon. And in case nobody has told you lately, you matter. Whether you're a little crackled or a, a little tinged sepia. <laughs> my friends laughing at me. We're all a little cracked, my friends. That's why we all get along. So you matter. You do make this world better. And I'm so glad that you... Um, let me share part of your day today. <laughs> Bye, friends. <laughs>